wildfires must be acting up again. It's smoky outside. Not as bad as it has been, but it definitely smells like a bonfire outside again. It smells smoky, and I can see the haze in the distance. Uh, we still got probably like three to five miles visibility, just my rough guess. But you can definitely tell that uh, there's some smoke in the air. I thought that rain that we had would have uh, helped out a lot and maybe put them out even, but I, I guess there's still smoke coming out of there somewhere. It just never stops, eh? Always smoky. Good morning, friends and foes. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. We make new movies, uh, new videos all the time. I wouldn't call them movies, I guess, but we're out here trucking, doing our thing. Love it if you join us. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, helps me out a lot. And leave me a comment down below. Helps with the YouTube algorithm and it also connects me with you, the viewer. Let's me know what you're thinking. I love hearing your thoughts and opinions and I just love hearing from you in general. So we're here in Southeast Manitoba. We're on our way down to Rosenort. I have an empty flatbed behind me. We're gonna take that flatbed there. We're gonna exchange it for a loaded one bring it back over here. So diesel is not with me today. I wanted to uh, first see how the day went with this new uh, patented design, the weasel bed frame that I built. I want to see how it works throughout a day first and uh, see if it's even going to be feasible, see if it even works. I don't want to bring him along and then have issues all day where it's just not working and then he's uncomfortable and I'm uncomfortable. I want to make sure that everything's ready for the for the Lord of the Weasels when he comes to the truck, sits on his throne. He has to be comfortable, otherwise I'm in big trouble. I mean, inside this cab, I'm the king, he's the Lord, but if my Lord's not happy, the king's not happy, no one's happy. So I've got the uh, centerpiece right here, built in there. And I have one in front of the passenger seat there as well. I'll show you in a minute. But I think it turned out pretty well for just throwing it together with garbage wood that I found lying around. <laughs> I just quickly slapped it together yesterday and uh, threw it in here. And actually, I think it'll work out pretty well. So if you're new here, uh, Diesel is my dog. He turned 10 years old yesterday, and he's been with me trucking since he was 10 weeks old. I did nine years of over-the-road trucking. If you want to know a little bit more about me, you can see my description below all of my videos. Just go below this video. There's a long description there explaining to you who I am, where I came from, and where we're at now. And Diesel would always come with me. He was always my co-pilot. He added a lot to the vlog. He was the, the focal point a lot of the vlog for uh, nine years. So now that I'm in a different position, I didn't have a sleep, I don't have a sleeper behind me. So I didn't think it was fair to put Diesel in the cab here and just make him sit on a seat where he can't even lay down all day, right? So I built him this bed frame now where he can stretch out and lay down. And then on days when I know I'm gonna be like in the truck all day, say if I'm going on a longer trip to Kenora and back or uh, the States and back or Brandon and back, and I know what I'm doing already and I know I'm, it's, it's gonna be mostly driving that day. I can take him with me now and he can lay down and I got a little platform here where his water bowl can be and I can spend the day with him, you know? Go on a short little walk if we have time for lunch. of it now. I think his character added a lot to the videos and to my day personally outside the vlog and I miss having the company with me. So we'll see. It's Friday today when I'm filming this so we'll see how it goes today and we'll see what we have planned for next week. We'll see what I'm, don't worry I'm going to take along Diesel's uh, uh, his old man steps because he's an old man now. Uh, they're portable steps. You can see them in my past videos when I was on the road. They, they fold up and then I can just strap them to the catwalk in the back, uh, secure them there, and 
then when uh, Diesel needs to get in or out of the truck, he's got like stairs to walk up and down. He doesn't have to jump up. Makes it a lot easier. right here and drop this in our loaded trailer is between those two roll tights the boxes on the bottom with the red and white yellow stuff on top that's that one's ours there let's put those on on there for now if i go on the highway i always slip those underneath this strap here that's why that tarp straps there or that bungee that they don't fly away but I'm just going right there so got to release the pin pin right in here you hook that in there and you just give it a little yoink make sure the landing gears down double check that before you pull out head on in here ah. Lower the air suspension. Give it a second to go down a bit in the back. That just puts the landing gear and the weight of the trailer down onto the ground a little more softly than just dunk falling off your fifth wheel, you know? Puts it down nice and soft. Make sure there's no one coming. Slowly roll forward. And there we go. Stop. Let your air suspension fill back up. At least enough that your tires aren't rubbing on your half fenders there. Okay. Now I gotta pick up this trailer right here. Uh, this one, see they tie it down for us here. This is this awesome place that I'm a big fan of. Except that yellow tarp, I'll show you in a second. That's gonna catch a lot of wind way they have that there we have to double check their straps though because uh yeah they do tie it down really well here you can see all of this they do a really good job but uh you still want to make sure that it's good enough to your standards you know because if anything comes off this trailer uh once you hook onto it and leave their property that load is your load that is your responsibility doesn't matter who tied it down all that matters then is who's pulling it. So you don't take nothing. You don't take anything onto the road that you are not comfortable with, that you think might fall off. Make sure you are confident 100%. percent i gonna sneak right under here. There we go. We'll, uh go on out here and let them know I've switched trailers trailer switch okay drop the truck off just so it's not idling the whole time here all right I'll show you what I meant with that tarp this tarp here all the wind is gonna rush right in here and blow this out. So I'm gonna add another bungee on here and there just to stop the wind from making it balloon out. This here uh, needs to be locked down. It's also very loose. You can tighten that up before you leave. I'm gonna walk around and check. See, this one's loose too. That one's pretty tight. Check every single strap. This one's loose. Because they, they probably tie it down tight in their shop and then they bring it out here. And sometimes the load shifts and settles just a little bit on the way out here. And uh, like I said, before you take it on the road, 
If you need to add any straps to it, add some straps. Uh, a bunch of bungees right there that'll need to be cleaned up. Remember there, I'll, I'll grab those. Make sure that uh, it's ready to go. They do a really good job, but look at all these straps. We have to bring the, this equipment back to them. So they take account of all the straps they put on here and then we bring it back to them and then they count it. And you know, if anything's missing, they'll charge us for it. So you wanna make sure you bring it all back, but it's really helpful that they tie it down as they load it. I'm a big fan of that. I really like that. I kind of wish more people would, uh, <laughs> more people would uh, do that. Cause it's a really great idea. I guess it's just a little bit of a nightmare getting all of your equipment back. But uh, you know, if you don't get any of your equipment back, you charge, you charge for all the equipment. And then you, simple enough. So we we're always sure to bring it back. You see how this goes down in here? It is loose, but this strap holds these tires down in there. That is brilliant. And you know, this probably would have taken me, you know, two, three hours to tie down. And now all I have to do is hook up, just make sure everything's good. Grab the little loose parts that they accidentally left in there and you're good to go. So I'm gonna walk around again, see this one's a little loose too. And double check all of these that nothing can possibly move. And this here, I'm a little nervous that it's like that in there, but since this isn't too sharp of an edge, it shouldn't eat through that strap, but you'll have to keep an eye on that. Oh, and there's just an extra strap just laying here and a loose piece of wood. Oops. Okay, well, see, and then there's this tarp. Yeah. All right. Not too bad for a Friday. There's a lot of stuff here. <laughs> So I pulled it out into the open here so I can get a good look at it. I tightened what needed to be tightened, added a little bit of extra securement just for my own peace of mind. I'm confident that uh, this load is secured. And that's not going anywhere so we're gonna head on down the road. There's a flying J just around the corner, well, just up the street, sort of, uh, what, maybe 15 minutes from here. We're gonna pull in there and double check everything. My left shoelace likes to always come undone, at least once a day. And I don't know why, because I tie it exactly the same way I tie my right shoelace, but my right shoelace never comes untied. or so uh, and we know it's gonna be a bit of a slow week 
uh, they're gonna send me on a, a little bit of an uh, extended trip and let me stretch my legs a little bit, maybe send me to Calgary, maybe to Kamloops, maybe even all the way to Vancouver or to Toronto or maybe down into the US and to Nebraska, Iowa, who knows? I'll go on a little bit of longer ones now and then. Just right now, I'm needed here. Uh, we're very busy, which is a good thing. You want to be busy. Uh, but we will be stretching our legs now and then in the future. But this will be my main gig. And now that I got this in here and the weasel bed, patented design, made of only the finest scraps, we'll be able to... Uh, Take these with. I should have taken them today. I didn't know that I was just gonna go to Rosenort and back and then go to Kenora and back. This would have been a perfect day to have Weasel with me in the truck here. But uh, I didn't know. I didn't know, right? So next week, next week. I don't think I'll take him with every day because he likes being at home with his siblings too. Uh, but he's retired, remember that. The Weasel is retired, uh, semi-retired. So when he does come with me, it'll just be like for a leisurely day. When I know it's gonna be a, pretty much just a driving type of day. I know my hood is pretty squeaky. It sounds like I have a bunch of chickens under there. And I cannot confirm or deny that, but uh, <laughs> I know I have to bring some old socks to work or something, because it's the hood mounts. It's where the hood rests on that it squeaks around when the truck bounces and then it sounds like a bunch of chickens. So I apologize for that. I'll find a, a fix for that eventually. There's a big hole in the ground there. Ontario about 10 minutes ago and I have about 30 minutes ahead of me here yet to Kenora. I gotta go sort of past Kenora to I think it's called Airport Road on the east side of town and then take that way down. Last time I went right through downtown Kenora and I learned pretty quickly that downtown Kenora is not exactly built for a 75 foot unit. It's much easier if you just take the long way in and it's actually faster avoid downtown on a Friday. <laughs> it's been a very dark day. I keep thinking it's like six, seven o'clock in the evening. But it's just a really thick cloud cover and I think there's some smoke up in the upper atmosphere yet. Because it's only 2.30, like 2.27 in the afternoon right now. And usually it would be way brighter than this, but I've got to have all my lights on. Looks like it's probably going to rain. I think it's supposed to rain this weekend. But we'll get through the weekend and then next weekend is September long weekend. It's Labor Day. We gotta celebrate all the labor we do all the time. And Britt and I are going to be celebrating our anniversary, our fourth anniversary, a little early. Our anniversary is on September 16th but we're gonna celebrate it over Labor Day weekend. I think she has to work on the Friday and the Sunday. I forget now, but I think that's what it is. So the Saturday and the Monday, we wanna go out and uh, do some special stuff for our anniversary. We were kinda of hoping to go out for the whole weekend and spend the weekend at some couple's resort somewhere. But alas, duty calls. You gotta work, you gotta work, you gotta do what you gotta do, you know? Life is expensive, cost of living keeps going up, going up, and going up. So she'll have to work on the long weekend and I don't know if I'll be called in or not. I, I really hope not because that Saturday is the one day when we're actually, uh, we have off together. And the Monday as well. We'll, we'll see what happens. See what I'm pretty sure that uh, if at all possible, I'm gonna be, <laughs> I'm gonna be taking that day to spend with uh, the wife. 
maybe we'll go on another hike or maybe go for a special dinner in Winnipeg. I don't know. We'll just worry about today right now. How about that? We gotta bring the sugar water into Kenora and then probably take an empty back to Winnipeg and then go home. So it'll be a little bit of a longer day today than usual. That's okay with me. So it's been raining all afternoon. It was pouring the whole ride back. It's still drizzling a little bit here. And uh, I brought back this empty. Uh, maybe I'll go to the other side. I brought back this empty trailer and it has an interesting lift axle that I haven't seen before. It's not like ours where it's on a valve system where you, you know, you switch it a little shrangle and uh, the axle lifts up or goes down. No, 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 this front axle is a lift axle. See, right there? But it's an automatic lift axle and I don't know why, I don't know if I can make it a manual one, but what I noticed is I was empty so it didn't really matter. As soon as I stop, even if I don't put it in park or pull the brakes or anything, that's what I mean, you know what I mean. The axle goes down as soon as I stop. I got a traffic light or stop sign, it goes, psh, goes down. As soon as I start rolling forward again, it sucks itself back up until I stop next. And at the next stoplight, it goes back down again. What is this? Sorcery. I was looking at it because on the other side, there's a little, uh, a little stick that points out uh, so that I can tell if my wheels are turning or if they're jammed or whatever. It's more so for in the winter to make sure your rims are turning and your brakes aren't frozen. See in the front axle there, can you see it from there? There's a little stick so you can tell if that axle's turning, right? So going down the highway, I could tell that it wasn't turning. I could, when I made a corner, I could tell the axle was off the ground. Oh, okay, lift axle, okay. Axle's off the ground. And then I, I, I come up to a traffic light in Kenora when I first hooked onto it and I heard this Oh no, I got an air leak. What's going on in my trailer? And I look back and this axle is now on the ground. I'm like, well, I look around my truck. I'm like, nobody hit the shrangle. Nobody's messing with me. The axle was on the ground. I was like, well, how'd that happen? So I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm gonna have to pull, it, pull off the road up ahead. So I went to pull off the road up ahead. And as soon as I started driving again, I could hear that the air was being pushed into the trailer again. And I went around the corner and I noticed that the axle was lifting off the ground. And I did that a couple of times. I tested it, I stopped, I looked at it. I don't know, it was an automatic lift axle? I couldn't find any levers or shrangles or anything to make it stop being automatic. So I guess just every time you stop with this trailer, it puts the axle down. And every time you start moving, it lifts it up. Why would it do that? You know? Let me know in the comments section. Why is it doing that? And you see, I thought this had something to do with it. On the trailer here, it says if the light is off, axle is down. But when I start moving and the axle lifts back up, that light doesn't come back on. So that light serves no purpose for me. Huh. Strangest things. I'm getting all wet. I gotta unhook and then go home. All tucked in with her sister for the weekend. There's uh, two more that are supposed to be here yet. I don't know where they are, but I'm not the last one out of here today, so it's all right. Let's get going. I don't want to go home. Oh, there's the other one. I knew it couldn't be too far away. 
It's missing one more. He must have parked it out front. Looking for 2025. We need a driver for that thing, eh? You guys, uh, if you want to work, got a good work ethic, you want to drive some trucks here, we are hiring drivers. We're looking for over the road drivers, fan division, deck division. You live in Ontario, that's okay. You live out east. We have routes that go out east on the to the Maritimes. You've seen me out there. We need city drivers to help us out here. We're busy. You guys want to work here? You got a good work ethic? When you apply, make sure you mention me, all right? I do get a little kickback for that, so if you want to help me out. But in all honesty, I think you'd love it here. Just give it a shot. 